Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not he if you're not new here, welcome back. If you aren't new here, I talk about missing children cases. So today I have a new case. Actually, I have two new cases. Um, so I'm gonna be uploading two different videos today. Um, the only reason I want to do that is because this one is gonna be kind of short. Um, and the other one is a little bit longer than this one. But I just wanted to get two videos out there. So let's go ahead and get started. Guys, do not forget to subscribe. Um, and yeah, let me just go ahead and get started with this video, guys. So today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of J of Jared. Um, sorry, guys. Negrete. Jared um, was born September 11th of 1978. And is a missing person who was last seen on July 19th of 1991. So, like I said, this one is a little bit, it is a really short case. There's not a lot of information out there. So, but I still wanted to put this video out there. There are going to be some of my videos that will be shorter than others, but I still want to put them out there because I want people to know that these innocent babies are still missing. So, Jared had gone with his fellow Boy Scout on a camping trip, which was the first trip that he would spend overnight. He somehow got separated from his group, likely after falling behind and then going off on the wrong trail. Jared was last seen wearing a green Boy Scout pants with a tan colored t-shirt, possibly a Boy Scout style t-shirt with black high top tennis shoes. Um, when a search was conducted to find Jared, 12 snapshots were developed from a camera that was discovered that may had had belonged to him. Most pictures of the on the film strip dispect the surrounding landscape, while the last image was a close-up of Jerry's face, only his eyes and nose were visible on this photograph. The 19-day search combined the area of 11 of uh, 11,000 foot uh, Miss San Gorginio? Shoes print were found about 10,000 feet matching those of Jared. Also found was his backpack as well as some beef jerky, candy wrappers, but Nick, uh, Jared himself could not be located. And that is the short, short story of Jared. Guys, I am so, so, so sorry that this one is short. There's not information on this case. It's just a really, really sad case. Um, if you look up his name, you could see um, what the picture that they're talking about is just actually is just a, let me see if I, I'm gonna show you out to you right now but you see that's the picture that they're talking about this is just his eyes and his nose there's no pictures of the other one if y'all do find it let me um let me know in the comments um it's just it's just a really Okay, guys, give me a second. So, I found another site that has, is a little bit longer than the one I, the other, the other. So, I'm, basically, let's go, we're going to start again, okay? So, I'm just going to upload one video because, luckily, I was able to find another website to where it explains more about his disappearance. So, 12-year-old Jared was born on September 11th of 1978 was a Boy Scout who was in his first overnight backing trip. He was last seen on Friday, July 19th of 1991 as about 6 p.m. when he fell behind his fellow scouts on a hike to the sum summit um, in, Sardinia, in San Bernardino National Forest, South Carolina. An extensive search turned up only some candy wrappers and a camera with hunting images of Jared on it. 30 years later, despite the largest search and, and follow-ups hikes, into the areas by immature investigators, no remains have been found. Many are asking why would a scout leader leave Jared alone on his first trip? Whistle he he and others got complete their hike. So where is San Georgina Mountain? San Georgina Mountain, also known locally as a mountain scout, Georgina Old Crayback is the highest peak of Southern Carolina and the trans transverse range 
It is in San Bernardino Mountains, 27 miles east of the city of San Bernardino. It lies in with the San Gorgino Wilderness, part of San Tusno National Mountain, managed by San Bernardino National Forest. Jared was 12, was an eighth grader with Hispanic background who lived in, in Mountain, Los Angeles County, California. He had black hair, had brown eyes, was five feet, two inches tall, and 150 pounds at the time. He was wearing a tan colored t-shirt, which may have been Boy Scout style green Boy Scout pants and a pair of black high top pro wing sneakers. He had a small birthmark on his right cheek and wore glasses with brown plastic rims. He was carrying a two quarter canteen of water. On Friday, July 19th of 1991, Jared was on a trip with his scout troop to an area close to the su summit for San Virginia Mountains in the San, San Bernardino National Forest, South Carolina. In total, the group included a leader and six scouts. Around 6 p.m., Jared fell behind his fellow scouts on the hike to the summit. Another group of hikers spotted Jared struggling behind and notified the, um, the troop leader at the summit. They said he was seen shortcutting the switchbacks in his way down the trail and was told not to end to and stay on their trail. A switchback is a trail up to a speed hill of mountains like a zigzag pattern instead of a straight trail. Shouting cutting is a switchback is bad trailing quality because it kills vegetations and lunar soils creating a new trail straight up and down the hill. With which will in time get larger and hollowed out of a, a arsenal? I don't get that, but okay. However, the Scott leader, an experienced hiker, said he would pick up Jared on the way down. When the leader finally was able to descend the mountain to pick up Jared, he was nowhere to be seen. First of all, I have a question. Y'all should have done stopped when somebody told you, hey, he's falling behind. Y'all should have stopped. And went to go get him. You should have told the key, the kids, stay right there. Let me go get him and help him so he could cash up with us. That's what should you should have, whoever this person is should have done. Why wait until you get to where you were supposed to get to and then go back and get him? That does not make no sense at all. And also, I, me personally, I feel like when there's kids you sh the kids should walk in front of you and you sh and the adult should walk behind the kids so you could have eyes on the kids why are the kids behind you and don't give me the whole thing you have eyes in the back because my teacher used to tell me all that I, I don't care the kids should always be in front of the adults however this guy leader um oh yeah okay so as soon as the troop leader realized that jared had disappeared he accompanied his five other screw back to the base camp and they hiked about five miles in the dark to get help. San Bernardino County Sheriff deputies along with search and rescue teams from as far away as the Syria Madre and San Dimas began searching at a, um, a 130 square mile area of San Gordino Wilderness, Rocky Tree Line in training. Within three days, their search was focused on a six square miles area where footprint believed to match one of Jerry's hip high top tennis shoes was found. Search also discovered beef jerky and candy wrappers believed to have been dropped by the Scott, the scoop by Jared, and most importantly his camera was located on the film row where twelve pictures. If you if you know you know, but back then there were pictures used to we used to buy cameras. We had to go to Walgreens or whatever, buy a camera, take the pictures and then you go back and develop the pictures and you wait until it's done. And yeah, it's not like today. Um, so that's what they're talking about. And I wonder with him finding candy wrappers and the beef jerky, I'm wondering if he was, he knew that he was lost. So he was trying to help, you know, hoping that somebody came, you know, came to look for him and try to help them, you know, follow a trail. Does that make sense? Most of the photos were landscape scene, apparently taken before Jared went missing. But the final picture on the world of the film was a photograph of, a, of Jared, eyes and nose taken with the aid of cameras flash, possibly at night. After her, he disappeared, family members said appearing Jared point 
his camera in his face and snapped the picture. It seemed possible that the boy had lost the camera while sliding down a protection of the mountain sides. At least 70 officers, some of whom were airlifted by helicopter into the forest and horseback riders, as well as helicopters with infrared, were developed, deployed over the next two weeks. As many of 300 people had logged 445 hours scooting 50 square miles at San Bernardino National Forest from August Oka to Whitler Water Canyon, a blue water bottle was found, but this was confirmed not to be Jared and had probably been washed down the mountain by flashing floating during the search. The temperatures were warm enough for Jerry to survive in an aid on the mountains for a few days and there was a significant amount of water located in the area as well as the bottle he was carrying. It seemed he didn't have any limited amount of snacks with him. No further clues were found. Jared had vanished despite the discovery of the camera and his pictures. Jerry remains missing three decades on as of 20. 21. So what happened to him? What happened on that day in July of 1991? It is somewhat alarming that Jared, who was only 12 years ago, was left behind by the Scott leader. Generally, the lowest hikers are put in the middle of the group to avoid anyone being left behind. Leaving a scout on his first trip away to wait for the others to finish their hike would nowadays be considered ricks or even Ne- ne- uh, gen- tin, which I agree if you would have done that today you I don't know what type of punishment you would get but it would not be good to, for you so did he fall off the trail and slip down the mountain sides he was seen shortcutting these switchbacks on his way down the trail but after the extensive search why wasn't anything found was Jared covered by the heavy vegetation and difficult trail in the area? Are there any sheer rocks well along the trails? Is that that the area that terminate the mentencing fields that are impressible as well as steps drops off? He probably got tired of waiting for the other s- scout to return, so he decided to walk down the mountain trail alone. It seemed possible that Jerry Split was severely injured and or died from his injury. He went off the main trail and it's more possible that he got lost and died. Was he abducted or murdered? There's no evidence foul play was involved, but the trail on the mountain is well used, so it's possible to a predator saw Jared alone and took advantage. However, it is really possible that a pedophilia could have attacked without attracting the attention of his other hikers in the area. That's true. I think that one to me is fast fish. I think that the way I see it, because mind you, whoever told the 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 leader that Jared was fine behind was close to Jared to see. They were close to him to see that he was fine that he was behind behind them, like he was slowing down. So why would someone come and take him? Knowing that he's going to scream and knowing that his friends are like right there. I That one to me does not. I don't think that one happened. Um, did he sculpt to a black bear or other wild file, wildlife? It is possible for black bears to attack humans. But where in there are cougars in the area? There were no signs of blood, drag marks, or other evidence linking to any animal attack. I want to go with that. He fell. I really think he did. I feel like he fell somewhere. He got hurt. Couldn't get up. Probably hurt himself in the head to where he went conscious and just didn't wake up. That's that's the type of... I That theory, I believe. But not the murder part. And and him being, um, you know, eaten by a black bear or anything like that. So Rick Muskay, a CR member formerly with the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Desert Rescue Squad, who spent over a week searching for Jerry in 1991, posted in Stranger Outdoors that, quote, I was on the search for a couple of weeks. He was seen by any, any uh, he was seen by a, any, another hiker cutting switchbacks on his way down the trail and was told not to and to stay on the trail. 
If you are tired, it can be tempting to some people to cut the switchbacks and apparently that it that is what he continued to do until there was no more as he descent. Now, below the trail and head into a canyon where his camera was found, below that was a stream and cliffs and some waterfalls, making it difficult to navigate. That combined with heavy brushes, at times a cruel under the brush to get through, made extremely difficult for searching. I was sorry after all of that effort of my of many that he was never found. In an interview, in an interview with Rick Feature in the McLean Location Unknown Podcast, episode 37, I was further in, interested in sight from Rick in the search for Jared. And that is the story of him. This story to me is really, really sad. I, I could not imagine having send your child to his first trip and doesn't come back. Um, I, me personally, the leader, I hope the leader got in trouble or got some type of punishment for what he did. Because I'm sorry, you just don't do that. You do not do that. I remember when when we would go to like our school trips to the zoo or whatever, parents were always assigned to to monitor like kids, you know, so they could help the teacher out. And And I remember always the parents, the adults telling us, y'all need to stay together. Y'all, we, y'all need to walk in front. We never, ever, even, even with me today with my daughter, I always have her beside me. If Like if we're somewhere else, I always have her beside me. Like I never take her, my eyes off of her. And I, to me, it still does not make sense. Why didn't you not go get him? Why wait until y'all got to where y'all were supposed to get then come back to yourself and get him and he was already gone what made you think that that was something no you should have told your the troop the boys hey right right there do not move let me go get him help jared out and continue the walking and keep him right next to you that is just common sense keep him right next to you common sense i don't know how old this person was i don't know if he was a teenager i don't know i i I don't know but i really it just it breaks my heart to know that he's missing because you wanted to keep going instead of telling you the troops stop let me go get him and then we'll continue going that's just my opinion but guys, let me know what y'all think. Let me know which I would have done different. I really would have told the kids to wait right there. I would have gotten getting him, came back, and all of us as a group would have continued in our hiking. So, yeah. I will talk to y'all soon. I will see y'all soon with the new video. Y'all have a good, good rest of your weekend. It's Friday. And, yeah. Bye.